Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Good evening. Good evening, Sister Lynette. How are you? All right. Good evening, everyone that is coming in. If you could please share so that way we can get um, this out to more people. I believe that this is a word that um, is truly life-changing. I know it's it has changed my life and continues to. Hi, Dr. Fingal. Oh, good evening. So if we can share this. Hi, Sister Cersei. I am trying to log on to my, um, my uh, Facebook group so that they can uh, tune in as well. And I'm doing that for my phone, if I'm able to. There we go. Let's see. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pray. Um, dear Lord Jesus, we thank you so much uh, for this message on today. We thank you for gathering us together, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that ministering angels, Lord God, deliverance angels have already gone before, Lord God. I thank you that you prepared, Lord God, the atmosphere in our hearts for your word so that we can receive it, Lord God, Jesus, in a way that we can leave transformed, Lord God. I thank you that, Lord God, every encounter with you, we should be looking to, to have transformation, Lord. Lord God, it's not about religion, Lord God, but a relationship that transforms, a relationship that transforms a relationship that transforms in Jesus name Lord I pray that this word goes on good soil Lord God in Jesus name amen amen how is everybody doing tonight I hope everybody is doing well all right so last week we talked about um, overcoming the spirit of pride and offense. All right. How many of us know that this is a word that is needed, you know, for for this world, for the church? If you're not in the church, like, you know, who wants to experience more peace of mind? I know I do. I like my peace. Peace is a gift. Peace is a gift. It is truly a gift. And I remember when I wanted to obtain peace, but I would do it in a fleshly way or I would do it in my own way. It, it looked very different from how I try to obtain peace right now. Um, and as a matter of fact, it was completely perverted. You know, if, if somebody did me wrong or if I was upset and I'm just being real, the little girl in me would want to be vindictive, you know, or the little girl in me would want to cut people off and be divisive. You know, the little girl in me, you know, wanted to feel good instantly, um, but might tear somebody down. And not always. That wasn't always the case. Um, but, you know, I just want to be honest about what that looks like when, you know, we have a spirit of offense. And it doesn't usually start off that way. And many times it starts off because we're, I mean, we're, we care. We're empathetic. <laughs> you know, we... Um, we want to belong. We want to be treated well. You know, we want to have good relationships. But if we don't plug into God and apply his principle um, in the midst of being hurt or experiencing trauma, we can become destructive <laughs> if we don't allow God to really do a work inside of us. And then hurt people, hurt people, and hurt people, hurt people. And pain that is not trans transformed is what? It's transferred, right? But God is wanting to break the transference of pain. He's truly wanting to transform us. 
You know, and I, as I was doing some studying, uh, I came across the scripture um, that I know all of you know. Let me see if I can pull it up really quick. Isaiah 53 and 5, but he was wounded for our transgression. So God is like, hold up. You know, sometimes we're like, God, did you see what they just did? No. <laughs> you know, did you look at how they're treating me? Look, you know, look at what they did in church. Look at what sister so-and-so did or brother so-and-so did. Or look at what my mama did. Look at what my mama did. <laughs> God has done a work on even, you know, my relationship with my mom. There's something about that mother-daughter relationship at times where, you know, there could be like a lot of conflict because the mom wants the daughter, you know, really to be their best selves. But sometimes it can come across in a very critical way. I don't I don't know if that's just me, y'all. But as I really realized the error of my ways in terms of not upholding that scripture, honor thy mother and thy father. And I'm like, but what if your mother and father don't honor you? But God didn't say that. He didn't say if your mother and father honors you, he said, honor thy mother and thy father. So your days will be long. I said, Lord, you got to help me with this one. Because I, you know, I think I got to a place where because of how I viewed myself and then I wanted to be so empowered um, I was like, you ain't gonna criticize me no more. You know, hold on. I'm a grown woman now. But God's like, no, that's not how you do things. And because I allowed God to do a work in me, it transformed the relationship. So I know God has been, you know, doing a work at NTG doing, you know, I know that we all yearn for our relationships or ourselves to be healed so we can experience better relationships. And I do want to um, just honor uh, my mother-in-law. I want to honor my mother because she's, a, you know, my goodness, uh, an amazing woman, amazing woman, uh, truly Christ-like. Um, I honor my mother-in-law. I thank her for the opportunity um, to come before you today and to entrust, um, you know, just the body of Christ, you know, her, the sheep, um, uh, uh, with me on today. You know, so I just thank God. Um, and I, I truly, first and foremost, honor God. So, so, you know, we've been talking about the, you know, overcoming pride, overcoming offense, right? Now, what would you do if you had more peace of mind? What would you do if you had more peace in your heart? What would you do? Would you go after your dreams? Would you be more inclined to go after your dreams? You know, what would your relationships look like if you truly carried peace on the inside of you? Hi, Sister Mimi. Hi, Sister Robinson. If you truly carry peace, like walked in peace, the spiritual armor, because we looked at that last week, because we didn't get a chance to go over all of it, y'all, because the word of God is so rich. Like everything that we need is there. And God sent not only a comforter, but a counselor, right? Because he doesn't want us to feel alone, right? And going back to the scripture that um, I was saying earlier before I got off on a tangent, he said, well, hold on, you're not alone. I know you, you, you're you bringing your hurt to me. And sometimes we grip our hurt so much that that's all we can see. And if I'm only operating from a place of pain, I'm not operating in freedom. So then how can I be free to have good relationships? How can I be free or even have the capacity to go after my dreams? Because whatever I rehearse in my mind is what I'm going to release in my life, right? He's saying, I went through it already. I went through it so that you can have the keys. I'm taking the keys back from hell, okay? I'm taking the keys back from Satan who tried to confuse you, right, with Adam and Eve. He tried to pervert our intended purpose, but he's like, I'm giving you the keys back, but the door won't open. The, the relationships won't work if you don't use the keys properly or if you, if you forget the keys, Right. If you're trying to get the door open by banging it. Right. Like, no, he's like, you don't even have to bang on the door. You don't have to be divisive. Right. We don't have to break through the window, but I gave you the keys. And if you use the keys properly, the door is going to open to you. And when I tell you the Holy Spirit is really speaking through me right now and I prayed about this, this wasn't all of that wasn't even a part of my notes. I know when the Holy Spirit is working because he will give you a word even up until that last second when you say yes to him. And I pray that even, even that right there encourages somebody to say yes more. 
Right. So God paid the price so that all of our transgressions could be blot out. Right. He's called us to do something for the kingdom, whether that is in church, whether that is sweeping the pews. Come on. I remember sweeping the pews at my old church with my mom. We would go faithfully and do that. And I, I thank God for it because it, th it taught me work ethic. All right. You know, or whether that is, you know, uh, singing. Right. Being a part of the choir, whether that's working in a hospital, working at some school, working with students, working on in film production. Come on, because he's calling us to the White House. He's calling us because, come on, y'all, the nation is so corrupt. But in order for us to. Ask God and, and, and for God to heal the land, we must humble ourselves. And we must have a clean house so the Holy Spirit can operate us in the way that he truly has designed for it to happen or for it to be. We have to go back to the intended purpose, right? The enemy has perverted things so much that, come on, there, there's a lot of prophetic words that are going out um, just talking about how God is separating the wheat from the tares. I had a dream a couple nights ago, and um, you know, in, in that dream, God said Emmanuel, which is like, okay, you, you know, I know you've seen a lot of lawlessness, Miriam, you know, but be anxious for nothing. Emmanuel means God is with us. But even as I woke up, what kept resonating in my spirit is I'm separating the wheat from the tares. I'm separating the wheat from the tares, right? What is the wheat? What is the tares? The wheat represents righteousness. And the tares represent something that it wants to tear down the righteousness, right? And in that parable, and I invite you to go in and, um, and read it, you know, God talks about how uh, he released angels to um, get rid of those tares and, and bundle it up and set it on fire. Come on. But it's his will for, um, for none of us um, to be condemned, right? He... You know, he paid the price for a reason. He wants all of us to be drawn to repentance. But it will be hard for us to be humble and be used in the most maximum way if we're operating from a place of pride or if we have a spirit of offense. All right. So he's calling us to clean up house so we can do his good work because we are a representation of him. So when people see you, they see God. And as people are seeing you, what do they see? What do they see? Right. So he, he's coming back for his bride and he has an expectation for us. You know, just how we have expectations for people. And sometimes we expect too much from people because we're not operating from a place of discernment. Or sometimes um, we expect too less of people. So then people begin to use us and that can create a whole other issues as well. But. I'm telling when we operate with God, he gives us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, discernment. He wants us to use discernment so we're not being foolish. But he has an expectation for us to live by. He wants your capacity to increase. But it will be hard for the capacity to be increased and stretched for his glory if that capacity is being taken up with bitterness or hurt or pride and pain. And pain and pain and pain. But he's like, I want to give you peace and peace and peace and more peace because he is the prince of peace. Right? All right, come on. It is God's will to be set free. Like, I am excited about freedom because I have been in bondage, y'all. I have been in some bondage. And I know what that is like. And it is not fun. It is not fun. And I don't want to go back to that. Freedom, is, is it, it tastes so much better. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. It is sweet. And sometimes we think that what the world can give us or our own way of operation is sweet, but it only lasts for a, a little bit until you need it again and again. But come on, he said, I'll give you a water and you will never thirst again. And he's not just speaking in parables. I mean, you know, he, 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 this is this is true. Man, I'm telling you, a peace that the world cannot give us and a peace that the world cannot take away. So he's coming back for his bride and the church is his bride. And he wants us to not get ready at the last minute, but he wants us to stay ready. And, and how can we stay ready? It's having your heart ready, having your heart are open. 
because he works in the heart of man. So your heart, our heart needs to be pure because it's the pure in heart that will see God. Right? It's the pure in heart that will see God. And it's about loving God with all of our might, all of our strength, all of our soul, with every ounce in our body so that he can do his perfect work inside of us. Right? First Peter 5 and 10 says, And the God of all grace, who called us unto a, a eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. That is a promise. He acknowledges, as long as you're on earth, yes, you're going to experience some pain. But when you plug into me, I am the prince of peace. You might suffer a while, but I will restore you. I will redeem you. But sometimes we act like we don't know that last part of the verse. So then we deal with things our own way, but then it doesn't work. And, and many times, I, you know, I always use the children of Israel as an example. There's so many examples in the Bible, but that is like the modern day church. <laughs> like, I'm like, wow, they did it over and over again. And it went from generation to generation to generation where you, you know the real God. He's the real one. He's real. He's real. But you keep going to what is superficial and fake. Why is that? Because we can be creatures of habits. But once we accept his salvation and we become born again because we have our heavenly father, it's a journey of mind transformation. Come on, transformation in the mind, in our spirit, creating me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Right? So when we do things, not Miriam's way, but when we do things God's way, Restoration is yours. That is your portion. Strength is your portion. A firm foundation is your portion. Remaining steadfast, unmovable, continuing to go, irrespective of the enemy's plots. And y'all, when I tell you, I mean, last days, my goodness, I don't know if people are, are tired of hearing that. And it's like, but when you really look at what's going on and you look at Revelation, because he's like, I gave, I gave you the Revelation, just read it, right? It is happening and he is releasing dreams and I'm having so many dreams and I'm having so many dreams and God is showing me the enemy in my dreams so that I can also go to war because we're constantly in spiritual battle and spiritual warfare. So he will show you the enemy before he even comes. And the word says that too. So, right, we got to be one with God so that we can operate as a kingdom citizen because we're in this world and we're not of this world anyway. But it takes submission and going beyond the flesh and into the spirit. And even recently, I'm like, God, how can I constantly live in the spirit? Because I'm just a spirit in this body anyway. All right. And what does that mean? It like it's they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. So that means if I'm operating from my flesh and I'm trying to worship God, he doesn't even receive it. <laughs> you know, and Wow. And how do I know I'm in my flesh it's if I have unforgiveness? If I'm still rehearsing hurt? If I'm thinking about Mr. So-and-so or Sister So-and-so and how they did me? So then if I'm operating up a sacrifice, it's no good. Like the example from Cain, right? Cain and Abel. All right, come on, I hope this is, is um, y'all, God's word is so sharp that it, you know, it, it deliverance comes. I hope this is helping somebody because it's helping me. How can I be in the spirit if, if those things are taking up my heart? Therefore, I'm not giving all of my heart. And he said, you will find me. Sometimes we feel lost, right? And he, but he said, you will find me. If you search me and you search me with all your heart. So it really takes all. I can't have any ounce of unforgiveness on the inside of me. And if I want to activate my purpose, like so many of us do, or if I, we want to hear from God, complete submission, all. The language of all. The heart and all. That's what he wants.
That's what he wants. Right? Not only that, if we don't forgive, what we won't be forgiven. So then if our bridegroom comes back, what is he going to see? Right? Because we, I put in my notes, we want a ring on it. Right? But are we ready for that ring? We got to make, we got to keep that ring. We got to guard it with everything. We got to guard it. Right? Because the enemy's main goal is to keep us disconnected from God and go against God's will. Right? The enemy wants us to be in our flesh because versus us, right? We have free will. And then the enemy is like, okay, I'm going to plant seeds, perverse seeds, so you can see things always in the wrong way and have and be, you know, be misinformed. And what the word says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. But if you pray for wisdom, he will give it to us in abundance. I every day. And I mean, I, I, I said, I receive the wisdom you give me and I still pray for it. I want more, Lord. I want wisdom like Solomon, King Solomon did. But then King Solomon took his eyes off of God and started and created a whole idol and started worshiping the gods of the women. My goodness. But Lord, Lord, I, I don't want that part. I, I just want the <laughs> I want the uh, the wisdom and the understanding and the knowledge exceedingly exceedingly because he who is wise wins souls i need and he who, who he who is wise and follows instruction has life and god wants us to have life and have life more abundantly he wants us to be a seeker of instruction and open to correction but if i'm operating from a place of a place of pride i am the antagonist of correction or the antagonist of my peace Right. I don't know why this is coming to me, but like, say, if a business deal, I open up a business. Right. I'm like, oh, I got this business ready. You know, but, you know, the, the pride in me, um, a part of pride, a symptom of pride is also a fear of rejection. It could be, you know, pleasing the people or always wanting to be accept, accepted or, or not wanting to be wrong. Right. So then if I open up a business and then the business goes south or, you know, um, yeah, I get bad feedback or whatever. Suddenly I just want to close it all down or just shut down instead of being open to correction. Right. I don't you know, so it's important for us to not just see things our way. Right. Sister Mimi said it's helping. Yes. Hey, Sister Lori. Oh, my mom jumped in here. Hey, mom. Hey, Sister Ernie. All right. But the enemy wants us to be in our flesh and be in spiritual, a spiritual bondage. Right. Because first we have free will. And then depending on how we use our emotions. It can give the enemy a foothold. Right. Let not the sun go down on your anger. And my mom can testify to this because she's seen a change in me lately where I'm I'm going more from a place of gratitude. Oh, thank you, mom. I appreciate what you did because she does a lot for us. That if I constantly maintain my position of, oh, you just so, you know, you're so critical, you're so critical, where really uh, it's just she wants the best for me. Right. But if I look at it from a place of understanding, I disconnect so much from the pain of my perspective. And if I'm only looking at through the lens of my perspective, I won't be able to see what she does give or what she does provide or how compassionate she is. And she is truly patient. My God, I thank her. I thank God for her. All right. So we have to understand and we, we're going back to intended purpose. We are the bride. And not just talking about women. Right. God is married to the church. He's the bridegroom. Right. But if I don't know my purpose and, you know, I operate in the absence of godly principle, it's going to result in perversion and destruction. The more I lean into my own understanding, but he's like, no, lean into me, because when you lean into me, I elevate you. I elevate your understanding. When we look at Moses and we look at Esther and we look at David and Jesus was the ultimate example of that. Right. I even want I heard of this one example um, with uh, by uh, Dr. Uh, Miles Monroe, where he was talking about it. So if you don't understand your purpose, misuse 
or self abuse is inevitable. And what does that mean? And he talked about how, you know, like what if you took a remote, like a remote that you turn the TV on with, and instead of pressing the on but button and using it with how it's supposed to be used to turn the TV on, instead I take the remote and I put it in the microwave with some idea that this is gonna turn the TV on when I put it in the microwave. But instead what happens to it, 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 it explodes. That, as silly as that sounds, when I operate from a carnal way, come on, when I operate carnally, because to be carnally minded is an enmity against God, it goes against God. So when I operate from my carnal mind and I don't apply biblical principle, right, and I'm trying to activate a healthy relationship and I'm trying to get, in, you know, activate a good marriage, you know, I want to find my man or you want to find your wife, you know, uh, or, you know, when I'm trying to um, it just have healthy relationships, but I'm doing that carnally or from a place of perverted behavior, what, what's going to happen to the relationship? Destruction. Because on the inside, there's a lack of integrity. There's perversion. I'm not operating in the right way. So I have to operate in accordance with intended purpose. And the only way to do that is to plug into God. Seek first the kingdom of God. His righteousness and all these things will be added unto us. Right? So what has God purposed us for? So I think even by now we understand the symptoms of pride and offense. You know, constantly feeling hurt and offended. You know, hates correction. There's foolishness. Uh, a fool's ways is right in his own eyes. It, it may be hard for us to see our contribution to the problem or always looking at the problem. A fear of rejection is in pride. Right. Amen. I, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Who was prideful in the Bible? There are many examples. Um, I was reminded of Saul. King Saul had pride. And first he was anointed. And the scripture, you know, talks about how he was anointed. He was called for the position. However, he did not follow correction. He did not follow correction. He was supposed to do something in accordance uh, with God's will in one of the battles, in the battle uh, against um, Amalek. That's what it was. But he didn't go in accordance with God's will. And it became very evident that he had become prideful. And a part of that was he actually feared man more than he feared God. And once we begin to focus on man... We're taking our eyes off of God. Now we're more conscious of man. And if I don't want to apologize, even if I did something wrong, come on, that's sin. I've now made my pain or my arrogance or my pride an idol. Because now my focus is not on God, it's on that. Right? All right, so he, he became prideful. He wasn't open to correction. He even had envy. He started hunting David, right? And then what the anointing came off of him, an evil spirit came onto him. Now it became spiritual. Oh my God. The emotion and the lack of correction turned into an evil spirit. Wow. Wow. Y'all, deliverance is the children's bread. I thank God for deliverance. I thank God for deliverance. I'm constantly repenting and praying and binding things. Come on. Because, I, look, I don't want pride in me. I don't want any spirit that's contrary to God in me. I will be the first one to say, okay, I, you know, pray for me because I just want to make sure there's nothing in this house because our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. But while, you know, while, while you can have the um, Holy Spirit, we can also be housing evil spirits. As Christians. So then we need deliverance. And deliverance is the children's bread. The children of God. You know? So be open to deliverance. Don't let pride stop you. Or look, don't let your dignity stop you from your deliverance. Come on. That's a word in itself, right? We know Jezebel had pride. And Jezebel, she didn't care anything about God. She cared about her gods. Little G gods. 
And here's a, an example um, that I touched on a little bit last week, but I was reminded to bring clarity to this week. We know Jezebel um, was trying to make her husband Ahab feel better. Ahab was mad because the God of Elijah took out um, all of the, those false prophets of hers or of theirs. Right. So he was upset. He was wrought. And um, Ahab was also upset because there he received the prophetic message from Elijah that the that the kingdom was going to be destroyed. And, it, it's, you know, he actually Ahab, interesting enough, instead of becoming so prideful, he repented and God actually had mercy and said, OK, after you pass, then the destruction will come. My God. So then even when we repent, that, you know, when we repent, God has mercy. He's looking to show us mercy. God is so good. He is so good because we know, come on, we, we can, we make mistakes, right? But anyways, Jezebel and all of her pride um, and jealousy, um, this was actually the issue. Ahab wanted uh, somebody's vineyard. He wanted the vineyard of Naboth, Naboth. But Naboth said no, because Naboth was godly. He wasn't going to give up what God had given him to um, to somebody, to a, a kingdom that didn't serve God. Right. So Jezebel said, you know what, I'm going to do it. And she became manipulative. You know, so when we operate from pride, we're just operating from our own perspective. And from a, it can be from a place of perversion. Right. So she went and she got people to sign a document. Right. She doctored a document and made it look like Naboth had actually done something wrong and that, you know, it was Naboth that uh, was in the wrong. And they actually killed Naboth. Jezebel couldn't see. She couldn't see because of her pride that he was a man of God because she didn't even acknowledge his God right, for one. But she didn't see that he didn't have the capacity or the approval to give up his land because it belonged to God. And that was his land that God had given him. So sometimes when we lack the capacity, sometimes we expect so much or we expect things from people that we shouldn't be expecting things from. And it, it could be because of a lack of discernment or pride or whatever the case. And then we get disappointed and we get hurt. And it's like, well, hold on, God's like, I didn't even ask you to go to that person. But when you, we acknowledge God in all of our ways, he will direct our path, our path. So then it still goes back to a place of acknowledgement and submission so that he can direct us and order our steps every day. I'm like, Lord, even before I go to sleep at night, because I'm constantly looking to be purged. I'm like, Lord, order my steps on tonight, even order my steps tonight. Because the spiritual warfare, y'all, is real. The spiritual spiritual realm is even more real than the physical like my spirit, I can get so heightened, my the senses, you know, that God has given us, I, it can be so heightened even, you know, at night or even during the daytime that I sense things. I sense it. I'm like, okay, Lord, what is that? Then I'm constantly, you know, I'm just constantly like, okay, Lord, just guide me. I need, I need to have that discernment. I need to hear, I need to hear from God. I need to hear from you, Lord. Open up my capacity. Help me to have understanding. Don't let me just, you know, see things my way. And then just get my hopes up or disappointed in people. Where God said, I will, you know, he will give us a favor, a supernatural favor. And when we, when a man's ways please God, he will make even your, the, our enemies to be at peace with us. So if he can do that, he can also send us destiny helpers. Come on. He will send us help. He's a good guy, right? So again, I'm pointing towards humility. Jesus showed humility. That is the um, another prescription. These are some spiritual prescriptions. Um, to pride is humility. Remaining humble. Remaining humble. I have to remember, hold on, I have, my, my mom is mom. She's going to be mom, right? So she's going to operate from her place of mom, and that is the capacity that she's in. So Miriam, if you know that, and you, you, you know that, don't always go looking to think that she's being critical, Miriam. Come on. Right? I'm not going to keep looking at a behavior that, I, that, you know, 
I'm not going to keep looking for the offense or looking for the problem. I'm going to start to see people in their capacity. When I do that, I am detaching myself from pride. I'm detaching myself from pain and I can have more peace. And it keeps me humble. With humility comes understanding. And that's what keeps me humble too, right? So we know that even Jesus, y'all, in his divine self, all of his div divinity, washed the disciples' feet in John uh, chapter 13, 1 through 16. They, and it was their pride that was like, hold on, God. He, woo, you, you, you can't wash our feet. It, it provoked something out of them. He's like, hold on. No. This, this is this is a must. This is a necessity. And his act, I mean, taught them something. It taught them an example what to stay humble, but it also cleansed their hearts of selfishness, of ambition. Because no matter what position you're in, we got to stay humble. So if Jesus did it, it's like, oh, okay, God, I see. Because you've given me power, but I don't want to pervert the power. Come on. And you give me favor, because favor is like a, even like a, a holy charm. Come on, people will do things for you and they don't even know why. <laughs> but if, if I pervert that, come on, then, then I'm exploiting. It could be a fine line, right? So we got to stay humble. We got to stay humble, right? So it killed their pride. It taught them a lesson of love. And you just even in some transparency, I remember even you just in my own marriage. Oh, my God. Like when I tell you peace is so good, it is so good. I remember there was just so much um, quarreling, you know, our, our, you be, we're so argumentative with each other. And I was in a fast. And I remember like just being so amped up and, you know, and hearing um, from uh, one of the mentors that I listened to online, you know, that, oh, people better not mess with you when you want to fast because God's going to teach them a lesson. And, you know, I'm like, OK, yeah, God, you're on my side. And, and you know, I don't want to argue and, da, 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 you know, but um, I think, you know, it, I don't know if I can't remember if I uh, if we started arguing or but I know there was an issue that we had. And I was just so hurt and, oh, Lord, why again? Why? Why? You know, and you know what he dropped in my spirit? He said, go wash, go wash his feet. When I tell you it was when because when you fast. When you fast, you open up yourself to hear from God more. He can he can speak to you louder in a more amplified way. Right. So it's not just me hearing my own thoughts and being so connected to my pain, but it's really a, a purging. That's why you're not eating. And I was just drinking water. So he dropped that in my spirit so strong. And I said, I literally said, say what? <laughs> you want me to do what? But I did. And when I tell you, my husband was like, he felt so awkward. But like in a good way, he was like, oh, man, like, y'all. When you the, like the love of God is so different from our version of love, because the way that we learn to do things many times um, is from imperfect people that are trying. Right. We grow up with imperfect parents. We grow up with imperfect peers. We grow up with imperfect teachers, you know, who, who are trying, you know, but sometimes we do get hurt. Sometimes we do get hurt. We experience trauma. So sometimes the way or our version of love is not um, it's not a godly version. You know, it's like, oh, yo, I tried. I did it. But God, when you really humble yourself, when we humble ourselves, it causes an upgrade to our love and our emotions that even the people that offended us start to feel awkward and they can't help but to be kind. <laughs> Come on, how many of us want an upgrade? Like I want an emotional upgrade, a spiritual upgrade, a spiritual upgrade that will impact me positively, impact my emotions positively. That, I mean, that is really the algorithm to peace is submission to God. Because it invites understanding. It invites correction. Then I become a plank remover, right? Because sometimes the pride is like, okay, I'm right. And I'm like, 99.9% of the times I'm right. But it's like, hold on, no, 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 no. Be a plank remover, right? Because sometimes we are so easy to see the 
the the the the speck in somebody else's eye when there's a, a plank in our I love that verse because I feel like oh my goodness like it is just it is funny it's so real but it's also funny it's like you're trying to remove the speck in somebody else's eye but there's a whole plank y'all can you imagine the, a plank there's like a trend before on social media where people are like are laying on planks and things like that can you imagine a plank and he's like spiritually there's a plank in your eye so many times many times before i address an issue you know i look to see did i do it first but if my kids seem so fixed on the tv and i'm calling their name it's because they see me ignoring mommy, mommy, mommy. And I'm like, mm, I just need to do this. Right. Because our kids are a really good reflection of us. <laughs> right. So a lot of what, one thing that keeps me humble is by being a plank remover. I, when I tell you, I really apply the verse. I apply that verse. <clears throat> or if I forget to apply it and I'm reminded to, I'm like, Oh, let me take a step back. I'm sorry. Okay, right? And I can better see how we're not just dealing with flesh, but flesh and blood. We're, we're battling against flesh and blood. Come on, I hope this is helping. So how do I deal with somebody who is prideful? By first dealing with me. I need to deal with myself first. Allow God to deal with me and transform me. Come on, that's a that's major key right there. Come on. Even lastly, and I'm going to stop here, is the the example of Esther and Mordecai, right? So how do we deal with um, someone who's prideful or narcissistic or constantly seeing things their own way or they're so offended? I'm going to let God deal with me first. I'm going to forgive I'm going to see the lesson and the solution or where God, how God wants to elevate me through this. I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm tired of being the bigger person. I remember being tired of being the bigger person until I realized, hold on, that is actually about my own peace of mind. If I'm the bigger person and not in a, um, not in a prideful way, but if, if I'm, if, if, if I is allowing God to elevate me in my emotion so that I am constantly in peace. Come on, being divisive, being angry, maintaining anger. I'm not saying it's bad to have emotions, but when I, I maintain it and I let it uh, become a stronghold, come on. Then it's like this perpetual thing. And the more um, emotional or emotionally unregulated I am, the less clarity that I have. And I'm going against the word. I'm going against intended purpose. We got to get back to intended purpose, right? Because intended purpose is I have not given you a spirit of fear. You don't have to fear being wrong. It's okay because I am the vindicator, God says. You don't have to fear or be upset because of what they hurt you. Because I will restore you. And I will restore everything that the, what the, the canker worm has stolen. I got your back. Come on. Even somebody that wasn't. Oh my goodness. Y'all, the Holy Spirit is downloading so much. And I'm like, I know I only got a little bit of time. But if he could look out for Hagar, because Sarah got offended, even though Sarah set that up, right? Because she didn't believe God in the promise. And she set that up and got this whole spirit of offense. Because now, you know, there's a child involved. Because she didn't allow for intended purpose. Come on, y'all. She perverted the plan. And now she has a spirit of offense. But Hagar cried out. And if God can see Hagar, he can see you and I. <laughs> oh, my God. My God. How do you deal with somebody who is prideful? Plug in the God, man. Plug in the God. Because he sent an angel. God is releasing ministering angels right now. He's releasing uh, angels to help with our deliverance right now. Only if we repent. Esther and Mordecai. Come on. Esther could have operated from a place of pride where she just wanted to protect herself, but she realized there's a bigger purpose. She had a prideful husband. She had a prideful husband that even if she were to open her mouth at the wrong time, it could have resulted in her losing her life. But how did she do? She plugged into God. She fasted. 
So while God did things supernaturally, because come on, who wakes up in the middle of the night? The husband woke up in the middle of the night and wanted um, somebody to read him a history lesson. And as they were reading him a history lesson, it, it was mentioned that Mordecai stopped the plot in his own kingdom. In his own kingdom, somebody was going to kill him and Mordecai stopped the plot. He hadn't known about it yet. He just woke up in the middle of the night. This was all during fasting. She, so she handled it. She recognized, uh, uh I'm not just battling flesh and blood. I see the pride, but I'm not just handling flesh, flesh and blood. I'm going to deal with it in a supernatural way so God can handle it supernaturally. And it created a divine intervention to where then she could, come on, whoo, to where then she could then speak boldly and truthfully about what was going on and the plot for uh, the Jewish people to be killed. Ooh, y'all. <laughs> Ooh, this is helping me. This is helping me. So when we plug into God, then we have the discretion to operate in divine timing. There's this a verse, and I don't have it before me, but even if somebody could even just write it down and Google it, you don't have to put it in the chat or you can, but there's a verse that says, um, uh, Lord, put a clock over my, my, my mouth so I can um, uh, uh, speak a word at the right time. I say that. Put the clock over my mouth so I can speak the word at a good time. So I'm better able to see my loved ones in their capacity and I can better navigate and pray and navigate because the Holy Spirit is a navigation. Come on, it's a navigation. It's our God processing system, literally a holy navigation on the inside of you. And he wants to order our steps. He wants to make our path straight. Y'all, woo! God is so good. Uh, God is so, so, so good. If you want to sow in, um, into the ministry, if a moderator can put the link in the chat. Just a reminder that church um, is on Sunday at 10 a.m. And then let's, you know, I feel compelled to uh, pray, but first let's do a little renouncing. Let's renounce. Lord, I renounce my pride. And just you can repeat after me. You can make it your own words. Let God just deal with your heart right now. Lord, I renounce my pride. I renounce the way that I've dealt with things, Lord God. Lord, I renounce, Lord God, Jesus, any unforgiveness. I come out of agreement with unforgiveness, Lord God. Lord, I come out of forgiveness, out of um, agreement, Lord God, with unforgiveness, with being bitter, Lord God. I, Lord God, I, I renounce any comparison of myself to other people. Lord God, I want to be open to your correction and the things that you have for me, Lord. I renounce the spirit of anger. And Lord God, being um, so attached to, to my pain, Lord God, that I can't see your promises, Lord. Come on, I, I renounce, Lord God, Jesus, anything, Lord God, that is contrary to you, Lord God, and what the Holy Spirit wants to do inside of me. Lord God, I come out of agreement with any word curse that I've even put on myself by saying that this is just the way I am. Oh, come on. Lord God, open up my capacity, Lord God. Use me for your glory in Jesus' name. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, for everyone that is praying and renouncing, Lord God, and repenting, Lord, we repent of all of our sins. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, you dispatch deliverance angels, Lord God. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, for all deliverance. Well, I bind every spirit of anger, Lord God. I bind every spirit of perversion, and I command it, Lord God, Jesus, to, to come out, Lord, to come out, to come out and go into the abyss in Jesus' name. Lord God, release your deliverance angels right now, Lord. Who the Son has set free is free indeed in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God, for releasing humility right now into our hearts, Lord God. Every place, Lord God, in our heart that is hardened, Lord God, Lord God, Jesus, I pray that you change it and turn it into a heart of flesh, Lord God. Give us, Lord God, wisdom. Lord God, release wisdom on your people, Lord God. Knowledge and understanding, Lord God, in a, a burden, Lord God, Jesus, to, to seek you and your word, Lord. So that we can be free, Lord God. So that we can prosper, Lord. So that we can live abundantly. Authentically. So that we can have intended purpose, Lord. 
In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen, amen. I pray that this blessed you on tonight. I know it blessed me. <laughs> it blessed me. It really did. It really did. Even if you want to go back and watch it again, because the word of God edifies, you know, and it imparts and it really delivers. Amen, Sister Robinson, Sister Mimi, Sister Dawson, Sister Lori, you know, Dr. Fingo. I don't want to miss anybody. Everyone that is on, God bless you. God bless you, Sister Cersei, Sister Mimi, everybody. God bless you. I love you all. Have a, a great night, a good day um, tomorrow. And I just pray protection over everybody. Um, and uh, that is it. NTG on Sunday. All right. Bye-bye.